All right, Drew here. Welcome to the Small Business Owners and Operators podcast, where we bring you small business owners that are successfully leading their own businesses. And today, we have hit solid gold. We have the man, the myth, the legend, who actually has his own day today. I just found out Fort Worth, Inc. has declared that today is Tony Ford Day. And so, of all days, I, I get to interview Tony Ford today. Tony, go ahead and say hello to everybody for me, please. Hi, folks. Good to be with you. Oh, my goodness. Tony, uh, wow. Yeah, I'm looking at your bio. I'm looking and I, I, I've seen so many of, of or, or talked to you and, and heard so many of uh, your stories of <clears throat> um, these different businesses that you've led and, and what you've, you've started and, and been a part of. And, and just to name a few, I mean, you're founder, founding CEO of Ride Television Network, um, co-creator and program director of Fort Worth Magazine's Entrepreneur of, Elect of Excellence Awards that just um, kicked off a couple or, or, or had their ceremony a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, Small Business Administration Exporter of the Year Award. That was one I hadn't, I hadn't heard of before. You see, you're keeping all these secrets from me. You're not telling me all these things. Well, I, I got to gotta wait till I get your bio. To do all that stuff. I feel really old when you start saying <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and so many other things. And here's what I wanted to ask you, because there's just so much there. And, and, and I do want, I do want to say this. So I'm going to list all the stuff in the notes because I want people to see this, but, uh, to give an idea of Tony, Tony for over 30 years, um, has had a passion for seeing Fort Worth, uh, businesses succeed. And, uh, and, and it's pushed him to create a one of a kind solution to accelerate their growth. And it's called success Fort Worth. And uh, in your most recent addition to this long list of, of Fort Worth focused initiatives that, uh, that I was talking about a few moments ago, and really your desire is to coach um, uh, Fort Worth based entrepreneurs and help them find their purpose and maximize their enjoyment of life, business and, and ministry. And I think that's fantastic. That is what a wonderful statement. I think that that's what you do for me and anybody that I've uh, talked to about you. You know, people talk about you. When you're not around, I didn't, I didn't yeah, we, we do that. We talk about you and we talk about how much we appreciate you. Um, and so, uh, anyways, I, what I want to ask you is what would you say of all these entrepreneurial efforts? Six, I think six businesses you've started. Is that right? Yeah. Six businesses you started. Which one would you say, uh, is your legacy and which one, which company that when you think about it, is like that embodies me and who I am. Well, it turns out it's not any of the companies, the for-profit companies that I've started. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's probably a, a, a toss up between uh, creating the Fort Worth Business Assistance Center back 20 years ago and we lost 50,000 jobs here in Fort Worth. We were trying to put uh, Fort Worth back on its feet. I mean, one out of nine people lost their job because of the closing of Carswell Air Force Base and wow. uh, downsizing it. General Dynamics, which now is Lockheed, but 19,000 people lost their jobs there over the course of about 18 months. Oh my goodness. So the mayor asked me to help her create a, a process whereby a lot of these mid-level managers could become entrepreneurs. And so we created the, uh, the first one-stop shop for, for uh, helping people become entrepreneurs. We call it the Fort Worth Business Assistance Center. It's been in business now for 21 years. Um, but between running that, creating that and running that for two and a half years and working with about 12,000 folks to help them start their companies. Um, the president of the United States recognized that as the, um, the model for how you do that. And so I, I won the Entrepreneur of the Year Award uh, from Ernst & Young in uh, a new category they created, Supporter of Entrepreneurship. And that got me on the map for the Kauffman Foundation out of Kansas City. And they have about a, they have a $3 billion endowment and they give away about $100 million a year to support the growth of small business around the country. Wow. And so they asked me to come to work for them um, as what they call an entrepreneur in residence. And so I spent the better part of five years going around the country to other communities that were beleaguered by base closings, economic downturns, and introducing them to the notion of what we had done in Fort Worth and creating business assistance centers, ways of getting entrepreneurs uh, on their feet again, helping That's them create great. bank loans learn how to write their business plans, whatever it took in that community to get them back to work. Okay. Um, because historically training programs are, are where people have gone to when, when economics went bad, mm. but they're notoriously effective 
in putting communities back to work. An example, huh. an example would be when we started the Business Assistance Center, an average training for, for every job created through a training program, it costs 4,000 uh, federally subsidized dollars. Okay. Through the Business Assistance Center model that we created, we were creating jobs for $400 a job. Wow. 10 times more effective than anything that had been done before. That's why I went around the country for that next five years and helped replicate that model. Wow. Wow. And, and listeners, those watching on YouTube, this is why I asked Tony if we could interview him today because he knows business. He knows small business. He knows he, he has a passion. I, I love that of all the things that you could have talked about, that, that's the one. That's the one that, that is most impacting you and that you're, you're, you want your legacy to be. And that's fantastic. Putting people to work, which is really, you know, small businesses do it better than anybody else, right? We do. And, you know, as a coach, Drew, you know that the most fun we have is uh, helping people discover their potential. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's why I love being around you and other coaches because what we're able to do, and, and that's really what I do now primarily is, is coach executives and, and business owners. Um, they have the answers. Mm -hmm. they, they really, they think they need the information. They want to lean on us as consultants or, or therapists or uh, mentors. And those are all valuable roles. Yeah. But I think most people, uh, when, you, when you reveal to them that they really understand their own business better than you ever will as an outsider, mm -hmm. and they're looking for action steps maybe to get started or, or to get past a, a place they're stuck, that formula, it, 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 it's simple, but it's profound. And again, yeah. as, as a coach, you know this. Um, when that light goes on, you don't have to tell them what to do next. Yeah. They know what to do next. They just need to go. They just yeah. need to start. And so I, I just love that part. And, and through the Business Assistance Center, through what uh, I was able to do with Kaufman, through what we now are able to do through the Entrepreneur of Excellence Awards, you know, these are all catalyst type organizations and mm. processes that help entrepreneurs be who they already are. Yeah. Get them off that dead center. That's great. Uh, yeah. I, you describe coaching so eloquently there. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Tony. Well, you didn't, you didn't get where you're at today. You know, you didn't start here. Tell us a little bit, tell us about the journey. How'd you get from, from there uh, to here where you are today? Well, I started out, I was born in Japan. My dad was in the army and so grew up all over the world, uh, poor. And so my life goal was to not be poor anymore. I wasn't looking to be rich. I just want to be poor. Cause you know, once you know how to do poor really well, it gets old. <laughs> yeah. so I, I just didn't want to iron my own shirts and, and you know, I wanted to have a good, good chair and a, and a remote control TV and all those <laughs> channels back then. That's really my whole goal. But, but I, uh, some people noticed me. I started uh, washing cars, mowing lawns when I was about 12 and uh, turned that into a business, became a, a waiter. Uh, when I turned 16, loved the restaurant business, loved helping people. So I went, I got my undergraduate degree uh, in hotel and restaurant from Oklahoma State. Went to work with uh, Steak and Ale when they were starting and learned how to grow multi-unit organizations through that. Uh, and then this girl walked into my restaurant one night and I knew there was something special about her. I asked <laughs> her out. We dated for three months and she led me to Christ. And we were married um, nine months after that, 40 years ago. And so Jane, and yep. so if you really want to trace back, if there's a secret to my success, which is really not a secret at all, it's the Lord Jesus Christ and my wife. That's fantastic. I got those two things. It really doesn't matter what the world does because I don't care. Right. <laughs> doing business is important, but it's not as important as doing life well. Yeah, that's and good. So taking, taking care of our people. You know, one of, the, one of the things that we've done in our businesses is, you know, we try to do three things. We try to honor God take good care of our people. And that's not just our employees and our customers, it's our vendors too, mm. and change the world. Yeah. Sometimes we can't get the third one done, <laughs> but honoring God and taking care of our people are non-negotiables. And people seem to respond well to that. That's good. Well, we have, we have that in common. We both met our wife in the uh, restaurant business. Yeah. So, so yeah, waiting tables, that's where I met my wife. But she was my trainer at the restaurant. So oh, I, I like to say some things never change, you know, so she's still training me today. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What, what is the greatest lesson that you've learned in business? Kind of what, what would you tell uh, yourself 30 years ago? If you could go back in time to 30 years ago, um, you don't have to tell us your age or anything, Tony, just 30 years ago. And, uh, and, and what would you tell yourself then about business? What's the greatest lesson you've learned? 
I'd probably tell myself three things. Number one, okay. I tell myself that it's not about me. Mm, wow. Other people and that you won't get much done if it's just about you. The second thing I would tell myself is that there's a, uh, there's a rule in business and it's rule number one and it's don't run out of money. You can bend pretty much every rule, but if you break that one, it's like monopoly. Everything goes back in the box and um, you may play another day, but you're not gonna play more today. Yeah. So don't break the rule. I mean, watch your cash flow. Make sure you, anytime you can harvest money and save it for a rainy day, do that. Okay. And I think the third thing I would do is uh, I would just say, get over yourself. You know, it's, 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 it's put, put your ego in a box and lock it up and then bury it. Wow. Because ego gets in the way of so many good deals. It gets in the way of so many good relationships. Um, you know, we're born selfish. And yeah. when, we, we, when we take that into leadership, we're not leading. You know, we're, we're tyrant. We're doing things that, but they're not leadership, not real leadership. Mm. Real leaders, real leaders come up behind people and support them and help their dreams come true. Yeah. That's when you really open up the opportunity. And I'd, I'd have told myself that I, it took marrying Jane and, and studying the Bible uh, to figure that out. And, and probably too long to longer than I'm happy to admit, maybe five <laughs> to years, but I got it. I yeah. got it. Yeah. That's great. That is, that's solid gold right there. Uh, well, let me ask you this. What do you, you, you've worked with small businesses for, many, many years, what do you see as the greatest obstacle that small owners, uh, small business owners face? And then how do you instruct them to navigate around that? Well, I think, I think there's two things that stick out almost every engagement I have, whether it's as a coach, a consultant, uh, a partner. Um, we're really, really embarrassed to admit what we don't know, especially in the financial realm. Hmm. Uh, I'd say six out of 10, maybe seven out of 10 owners don't know how to read a profit and loss statement. They don't know how to read a balance sheet. They don't know what those numbers or ratios mean and they're ashamed to admit it. Hmm. And what I tell them is, look, you know, get some help. Hire, hire a good accountant, go to a local junior college, get somebody to tutor you on finance because business is all, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Hmm. And so the first thing I would say is, is get over being ashamed that you don't know your numbers and go learn your numbers. The second thing I would say is, um, it, it's, again, it's this ego thing. I mean, you, you've really got to make a choice. There's two ways to lead a company. One is everybody in your company is filling a hole and they're just another part of the machine. Mm. And I'm not judging. I mean, there's a lot of quote unquote successful companies that manage their people that way. Yeah. The other way is this is my responsibility. If you're, if you're a believer, then it's probably this is my ministry field. God's put them in our, in our path to take care of whatever that means. You know, like we've had abused spouses that we've had to put into apartments. We've wow. had to put people in rehab. We've done all kinds of crazy stuff, loan money, you know, it's the normal stuff. But you make a decision as a leader and as an owner, which way you're going to treat your people. Mm. And conversely, I think they make a choice about which way they're going to treat you and your business. And we've always found that it, if, if we extend trust and respect to our people first, before we ever expect them to earn it, then they extend it right back to us in the way they do their jobs. They don't steal. They don't yeah. cheat on their hours. They do a good job for us. That's good. That's good. What was it? Zig Ziglar said, if you, if you meet other people's needs or take care of them, they'll, they'll take care of you. Right. Something to that effect. And absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what you were just sharing. You've lived it out. That's great. Well, you, you alluded to personal development. You, you said if you can't read a profit and loss sheet, go to a junior college or, you know, a, you, you could probably find a YouTube channel, you know, now or a home study, yeah, right? Online, sure. Yeah. Um, how has personal development and, and continued learning um, impacted your life? I know we both engage in that. We both help and do trainings and leadership development, all that kind of stuff. How, how have you uh, taken advantage of personal development in your life? Well, I've been very fortunate in that because I've owned most of my own companies, uh, I've had the opportunity to go to seminars, trainings, uh, certifications. Um, my master's work was in education. So, you know, I, I like to learn. Yeah. What I have found that separates out the really world-class entrepreneurs versus just good, nothing wrong with them. They're just not world-class. And that is their reading. They're readers. Mm. And, and I don't have a problem with people that do audio books. That's fine. But I mean, I read probably six to eight books a, a month. Wow. Uh, and, and oddly enough, I don't read very many business books. I read some 
parts of business books. But I mean, I read uh, technical books. I read fiction, a lot of fiction, uh, because good authors are really psychologists who know how to write. Hmm. They develop a plot around the way people behave. Yeah. And the more you read about the way people behave, the more you see it in the people around you at work and in your own behavior, it can identify patterns of behavior. So when you see somebody acting a certain way, all of a sudden you realize there's something wrong in their life. <laughs> They're not telling me what's wrong, but there is yeah. something. And when there's something wrong, then that means it's slowing them down. And so whether you're the one that intervenes and helps them or you get them some help, they don't just keep trudging along, losing momentum and ultimately maybe even getting themselves fired over something that's silly because you've recognized it way back here in a place where you can help them. Yeah. So I get that out of the reading I do. I see the patterns in people. Wow. That's, that's huge. I, uh, I mean, read and reading that much, I, with audiobooks, I, I work at getting five a month done. So you are just blowing, blowing me out of the water there. And I know that you, you've gone through speaker training. We've had conversations, you, you certifications, licensing, you know, coaching, all that kind of stuff. You're a constant um, learner. You're constantly learning and developing yourself. And, and I really admire that about you, Tony, and, and all that reading as well. I mean, I didn't know that. Um, that's fantastic. Well, like tonight, Drew, my wife and I are, are we're about halfway through a, uh, a biblical counseling course that takes about three years to get certified. Whoa. I, I came here to go to, I mean, I went to seminary for two and a half years when we came here 35 yep. years ago. But I found that a lot of the uh, uh, business coaching that I do always seems to end up in marriage coaching, marriage counseling, family counseling, something. And while, uh, this is just my belief system, but while uh, clinical psychology can bring relief, I happen to believe that the Bible can bring healing. Mm. So we're equipping ourselves to, to use that tool in these other settings to help people get healed from whatever misery they're in that's slowing them down. That is so good. That's so good, Tony. I mean, wow. And almost completing a three-year program. That's great. I love that. Relief versus healing. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, Tony, tell us, tell us something you're working on right now. What are you excited about? What, uh, what's what's kind of got you, got you excited right now? Well, this whole coaching thing, and, I, and we shared this at breakfast the other day. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that everybody that wants to be excellent needs somebody that's, that's challenging them, uh, asking them what their goals are and helping them clarify that. You know, like I do, coaching really does two things. It brings clarity and then it brings action steps. Yeah. You know, it's just that, it's that simple, but it's very profound. Yeah. It's, not, it's simple, but it's not easy. Okay, and, and a talented coach, somebody like you that, that's submitted themselves to a lot of training, that's got a lot of hours, you know, that's doing this kind of stuff. I would really like to see, the Fort, at least in the Fort Worth community, and that's why I call my company Success Fort Worth, mm -hmm. be kind of a clearing center so that um, people can find a great coach. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have a limited span. I can, I can take on a certain number of, of people that I work with at a time. And even then, somebody might contact me and, and, and interviewing them, I realize I'm not the best coach for them. They, yeah. this, is not the right, this is not the right match because it is a match. You know that. It's a personality mm -hmm. thing. It's a lot. So I want to know the other coaches like you and others that are really good, that have committed themselves to the craft, that know their stuff, that, that yeah. won't you know, embarrass anybody and, and, and will do good work. And I want them to be able to call Success Fort Worth and have me say, hey, listen, uh, I hear what you're trying to do. I'm not the best choice. Call my friend Drew, you know, call Sally, call Bill. I think for what you're trying to do, they are world class at it. Yeah. In fact, let's go, to, let's go have coffee. Well, I'll just bring you to coffee. Let's, I'll introduce you personally. Yeah. Because about getting these entrepreneurs what they need as soon as possible because they could be impacting 10, 15, 100 people by not being able to get what they need. Yeah. And the goal is get everybody what they need through coaching. That's, that's my goal now. That's my new mission. That's great. That is exciting. I'm, I'm excited hearing about it and uh, hearing about it again. Um, and people can connect with you at successfortworth.com. Um, and you, through that, uh, you have coaching services that yeah. you provide. Um, tell us your, who is your ideal client, more executive coaching, am I, am I right on that? Well, as you know, a good coach can coach anybody. Yep. Uh, but a lot of times a client will want to be coached by somebody that's had a similar life circumstances they've had. Mm -hmm. My life has pretty much been as a small business owner creator my whole life. 
uh, obviously I sat in the big chairs, the CEO of my own companies and, and these nonprofits. Uh, so, so most of my customers are business owners, executives, people that are on a, on a, uh, executive team. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have pastors and I have other people that, that I work with. Uh, I, I typically work with leaders of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, and I'm going to have all the contact information uh, with the podcast and the, on the YouTube. And we'll have links where you can connect. You can go to successfortworth.com. You can find out all about Tony and uh, connect with him if, uh, if you are in need of his services, which like... Like we said at breakfast the other day, uh, you, you want to see a, a world of Fort Worth where everybody, it, it, the normal is that everybody has a coach. And um, Absolutely. yeah, if all of us have greater clarity of our gifts, talents, and abilities, and then we have someone holding us accountable to take action, I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? That's, well, the, that's best, the best thing I tell people is I have a coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Absolutely, absolutely. You're a believer, right? Yeah, I believe okay. that. Right. Well, let me let me ask you some rapid fire questions. Are you are you up for some rapid fire questions as we close out? You bet. Okay. Now I switch them up. Okay. So I sw- I, I, I got to keep you on your toes. All right. Uh, this one you you might have known about though. What's the last thing you watched on TV, and why did you choose to watch it? Uh, I watched a special on artificial intelligence. And, and how robots are starting to duplicate robots. Oh my goodness. Which is a little scary. <laughs> Terminator, right? Yeah, kinda. Oh but, my goodness. But we're getting there and, it, and it's gonna change the society in a, in a lot of ways, yeah. Right, I think chat, chat bots are like the new thing for, for social media marketing. So that's gonna, that's gonna come around. All right, this is a cool one. So if a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be? And who would play you? <laughs> wow. Uh, my, first, my first reaction would be it would be a comedy because most of the businesses that I've started came out of nowhere and they weren't my idea. I just kind of fell into them and, and they worked. Um, it'd be a mystery for sure because I, <laughs> I still don't know how this thing ends. I really don't. Um, it would be a love story. Okay. Because, because of Jane and Jesus. Uh, as far as the person that played me, I'm thinking, uh, you know, somebody good looking like you or maybe Brad Pitt. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Brad Pitt. Yeah, I knew. Everybody says Brad Pitt. Right? Everybody. Yeah. Because we both have hair like Brad Pitt, right? Well, some of us want to. <laughs> All right. Um, well, here's one. What is one thing that annoys you the most? Apathy. Apathy. Great. Apathy. I can't do anything with apathy. Apathy is I've given up. Apathy is I don't believe in the future anymore. Apathy is I, fear has frozen me. I can't do anything with apathy. Apathy is jello. Apathy doesn't mm. have a shape. Apathy has no future. And I do pretty much anything with anything else. Apathy is just, I don't have a starting point. <laughs> I can see. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you, you know, frustrated with that question. I'll move on. <laughs> um, okay, so fill, fill in the blank. When I dance, I look like... Oh, gosh. You're talking to a guy, to a guy with an artificial knee, an artificial back. My gosh. Um, I look really slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't move a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this one? On a scale of 1 to 10, how cool are you? Hmm. Well, see, now I think I'm pretty cool. <laughs> Because I work so hard at it. But okay. On 10, but, but on a one to 10, you know, with the skinny jeans and the whole bit, other people wear, I'm probably about a six, five Okay. Or six. Okay. So you only have a couple pairs of skinny jeans is what you're saying. And I only wear them around the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then last one, uh, with Ride TV, I mean, I have to ask this question. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? You know, I think I would rather uh, run the other direction and live to fight another day. I don't think I could run a fall either way with those. Okay. All right. Hey, Tony, thank you so much for, for uh, letting me interview you today. And uh, it has really been a joy. Um, this was uh, the Small Business Owners and Operators podcast. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening on the podcast. 
And we want to bring you great uh, small business owners and operators that can, that can just really give you wisdom and insights on how to lead your business. All right. Thank you so much for joining in. Mm -hmm.